pair of glasses I got, and I was 20 years old. And I walked outside of that eye doctor clinic building, it just like you stepped into a new world. I didn't really realize how beautiful the colors and everything were. Roger, I know I was having trouble, you know, when I was in the Air Force, and they finally decided to check my eyes and found out, you know, that I needed glasses, so... I'm like you, you know, it sure made a heck of a difference. You remember me telling you back about four years ago, uh, over at Hot Springs, they prescribed them trifocals for me, and I ended up throwing them away a year later. I never could get accustomed to them. Yes, sir, I sure remember you telling me. I think them darn things was three hundred and sixty eight dollars. This eye doctor over here, he's asked me two times. He said, What was the last kind of glasses you you've worn? I said, Trifocus. He said, Why in the world would you want to wear trifocus? I said, Now wait a minute, don't go jumping on me flat footed. I said, I didn't prescribe him. I said, That idiot I went to did. I said, I kept telling him. I thought they gave me somebody else's prescription. <laughs> he kept having me take a while to get used to it. He said, well, I don't understand why he thought he needed trifocus. He said, the only thing you need is a piece of cataracts are big enough to come off and make. Yeah, I tried them things too one time, Mike. I let them talk me into trying them. And I wore them about three weeks, and I took them back to home. Look, I want a pair of glasses I can see out of. And they, they got rid of them and gave me another pair. Well, I don't understand about these cataracts. He said they might not be big enough to come off in May. He said some will grow considerably fast. He said, said it might be another two years before I get them off. I told him, I said, well, Doc, if they come off now, it won't bother me. Go ahead and get them off now. Well, Mike, they don't like to do that. They don't like to take them off until they just have to because there is a chance of something going wrong, you know, and them damaging the eye where you can't see it all out of it. So they like to wait till the last minute till you're almost blind before they, they take them off. And that's the reason why. Yeah, they'll tell you what can go wrong and all that and have you to sign a piece of paper statement, you know, they told you and all that kind of stuff before they'll take them off anyway. Kitty five PMO. Yeah, so like a doctor told me fourteen years ago, but ain't hardly a doctor one gonna give you a hundred percent guarantee and good evening enough there, Mr. Mayor, W five and S and you. Right, Peter Billy. Boy, well, doing okay to the seating. I can't complain too much about the business, man. Enjoying this cool weather. Been real nice the last couple of days, have you? Yes, sir. Sure been nice to be able to have a window open instead of an air conditioner on. You, you think you're going to get uh, one more crop of blackberries up there? Oh, no. Blackberries been gone a long time. Did you get all them antennas uh, mounted and ready to hook the rope to it next week? Well, been busy with a couple other chores. Uh, went up uh, today for the first time back up to the mountaintop, checked out the repeater up there, and took a voltmeter, checked the batteries. Uh, first time I've ever seen it, all the lights on the controller was green. And uh, batteries disconnected everything, and the batteries are showing 12.5 volts. So that's been over uh, what, about a week and a half now, and they're running in the green, so I guess everything's going good. That's a good deal. Well, I, I knew you'd done a good good job for supervising up there, and you kept old Todd up that light pole for seven hours. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that long if that leg of his hadn't locked up on him, I don't think. Yeah, I've seen some of them fellas pull that stuff. Do anything, get out of a little work. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go to Stuttgart tomorrow. 
Uh, boy, got a poppin' Johnny over here. He's wanting to sell pretty bad, so I thought I'd go over and look at it. What model is it? No A, B, 60, or M's, or what? It's a model 2010. Well, that's a little up, more update model. About a, I think about a 64, 65 model. Uh, got, uh, got live PTO, hydraulics, power steering. But the main thing I like about it, it's, uh, it's a little bit bigger than this Ford of mine, but the uh, main thing I like about it is it's a uh, it's butane burner, which is what I wanted. Well, that dead blame butane now don't start to be like pulling, going to dentist and pulling high teeth if you need any of it. Well, it's high, but so is everything else. I think I might be able to get a little bit of a price cut on it. Uh, Use it for farm, you know, for farm use. Because the whole thing that I use uh, outside of the tractor stall, the only thing I use the butane for is just one little bitty heater here in the living room. So I might just be able to squeeze out a little bit of a discount out of it. But uh, uh, see, the thing I like about this, I got that old big tank out here in the front yard with a fill hose on it, and I can fill it right off my tank. I don't have to run back and forth to town to get gasoline or or diesel. Yeah, yeah, you just got a, you got a plus right there then. Yeah, I don't blame you. I told Stu to tell you, right there on the right, on 70 uh, west, like you're going out to Stu's on the high hill up there. I told him about a week ago to tell you for a nice little old Ford tractor with a bush hog sitting up there on that hill for sale. But I didn't pay no attention if it had a butane tank on it or not. But it's been there for a while, so by that indication, it either may be something the matter with it or it may be too high for folks to buy. Roger. Yeah, well, the old boy got a good, you know, he got a real good price on it. Uh, if, if the tractor's in pretty good shape, you know, it's, it's worth what he's asking for. It's well worth that. See one of them rice farmers you mentioned, Stuttgart. Oh, uh, he's got the tractor and the bush hog uh, goes with it. That's a, he said that's the only thing he'd use it for. He'd want to use, but the only thing he used it for is for bush hogging around there. Man, you're going to have a pretty good little trip ahead of you there tomorrow. I imagine it's going to be about a three hour drive over. Yeah, I was thinking about on the way back, driving that sucker back. You reckon you'll get back before the first frost? The uh, old boy said that he'd bring it over here if I bought it. Oh, so, uh, basically you wouldn't even have to go over there. You'd just tell him to load up and come on, if it's what he says it is. Well, he sent me about three pictures on cross, you know, emailed them to me, but looks good, but, you know, I still want to look at it. I, I, don't spend that kind of money without looking at the thing, driving it.